we got uh, a primary capacitor bank here, and we have a primary coil here. Uh, an error occurred whereby this is some 3.1 microfarad placed in parallel, and one of the wires come loose on that capacitor bank, making it a smaller capacity. And some of the previous videos that we showed, uh, the circuit was actually being inductively driven because we lost some of that capacity on the circuit. What we want to do here today is just show the ratio of resistances, first of all, and the performance of the circuit. Right there's the primary coil. And here's the a resistance meter on the coil showing 126 ohms. It's on K ohm setting, reading 0.126 and it's 126 ohms. On the bottom coil over here, that's a 75 pound coil reference to a 12 pound coil and we have a, a meter reading there of 860 ohms. We have the ratio shown on the calculator as 6.8 to 1. Now we have to do a little thing of difficulty. We have to disconnect the resistance meters and show the actions of the circuit. And note that ratio 6.8. When you measure resistance, you have to disengage the capacities that each inductor is uh, connected to. Uh, otherwise, it introduces error. So in other words, we have to unhook everything to make these resistive readings. So when we go in there, it's going to take about a minute to put the circuit back into the original formation then. Behind that we have two other meters to show what that will be. Hopefully we can get this done quickly. Let's take that one out. That one goes there. Uh, the other one that goes into the power input. Now we removed that meter Get it out of here. Now we're going on the secondary circuit. Uh, this might be difficult. Let's see if I can remember. Okay, there's one of the meter leads. That should go to that junction. And then there's the load. Wire. And we got one more uh, wire to contend with, I think. And that's this one. We should be able to uh, disengage that meter. Oh, brother, where'd the other third one go? Oh, it's behind there. Okay, now we got the circuit back in actuated form. And let's see how it's working then. Right now we got a load on this secondary coil. It goes through a magnet through rather unconventional means. This wire here clips to the resonant rise of the large coil and on the top of the magnet, the clip is on the top of the magnet, comes over here to the neon bulb. Then the neon bulb is returned to the other side of the circuit. This is the load on that circuit. Now we can compare the ratios of amperages. Hopefully if everything is working right. We're going to employ a 25 volt variac. I'm going over here to turn the variac on. And we've had some problems with this variac showing its voltage. Uh, we're trying to get this thing on the camera so we can show that it's actually a 25 volt input. There's the voltage meter. We're having problems with that. Let's take that down to 25 volts. You got that in the camera there, Devin? You've got to be looking at that thing. Are you doing it or not? This yeah. right here. 
Now we're going to plug that in. That's 25, 26 volts. I don't know why it's dropping. But it does that then. Good thing we got a cameraman working. Now we got 130 milliamps going into the primary. Right there. The effect Devin. is working on the camera. This, everything quit working? No, it's working. Okay. Are you still effect. filming? Yes. Okay, look then, get to where I'm looking at then. We got 130 milliamps on the primary. We got 23 milliamps on the secondary, which is being loaded down by that load. What we want to show next. The light is off on the camera. It might be. It's been doing it since I turned since I've been looking at the well, look, there it goes. Okay, well it does that anyway. That's the phase distortion. Okay, we're just trying to show the relative amperages and comparative amperages between primary and secondary circuits. Remember? When we first started out. It was six point eight to one. Okay. The ratio. Now the ratio is 130 milliamps divided by 23.5 milliamps, giving us a ratio of 5.5. I don't know if Devin can capture that, but we're, what we're going to do in the end here in this video is show what happens when we in fact open the load on the secondary circuit. What we're trying to get to here is the ratios don't match at all. But now we're going to see the final proof of everything and uh, as Devin noted he's probably seeing a, a phase in and phase out of that discharge. That's due to the time distortion on the secondary. But right now we're not looking at that. We're only looking at amperage ratios between the components. Now, we got 23.4 milliamps of circulation on the secondary caused by 130 milliamps circulation on the primary. As soon as we open that circuit, we should see the true ratio of delivery of amperages between the systems with no load. More importantly, this is the amount of current on the outer loop. We don't have a meter on the inner loop of that neon discharge. But more importantly, once we open that circuit, this quantity will go up because there's no load on it, and that quantity will go down. Now, of course, when we experiment with these kind of things, we like to know whether symmetry is involved. <laughs> so in this one single clip of a wire, we can compare the ratios of deliveries on them to up and down ratios. As we see, this is 33, and that went down 107. We, of course, can make those fractions of compare and see if they are reciprocals of each other, or they're symmetrical, or whatever. But more importantly, what we need to know is this is now 100 to 33. This is 3 to 1. When we started out, it was almost 7 to 1. And so there, you have to understand that there's a big discrepancy here. And there's even things more intriguing beyond that because we haven't compared the I square R losses to the actual energy transfer. But I think uh, we did a good job here in showing the differences and documenting the system of the components and what they are. Thank you.